something rather than nothing. Hello, everyone. My name is Al Persson. You can contact me at pastor at mascot.church or in the comments below if you like. If you like these videos, like, share, and subscribe, and we're going to see if we can grow the channel. It's important to have a, an argument, if you will, a, a, a set of steps in your mind that can be used to help to justify your understanding of the existence of God. It's a, you might call it an apologetic, if you want to use that language. I have one that's based on the argument from dependency or the argument from contingency that Leibniz founded. And you can look back in my channel. There's some other discussions in the past on this topic. I use these things for my own spiritual edification and also in conversations with people who are questioning whether, the, you know, their, their walk with God or whether there is a God. They, they're, they're on that journey. I know that these arguments don't get people to the cross for salvation, but they do open the door for one to talk about the goodness of God and talk about him as creator and sustainer of all things living. So what we want to do with this discussion, I want to take you through my basic steps for your edification. It might get you to think about some things, and we want to take you from the world or the universe that we live in today where there is stuff, there's things everywhere. There are tangible, visible, and some invisible things in our universe. And we want to drive the argument back to from there to nothing, to when there was or there could be nothing. I want to see how we do with this. So when I say nothing, I don't mean something black because black is a thing. I don't mean a, uh, an empty space because an empty space is a space nonetheless. I don't mean a vacuum because a vacuum is a thing. I mean nothing. No up, no down, no white, no black, no green, nor blue, no time, nothing, nothing. We want to push all the way back, and, and we want an argument that helps us to get there. And where we would like to go is to a verse of Scripture that reads a bit like this. Now, there are a couple of passages. This one is the one from Colossians. I'll put on the screen and read to you. It speaks about the Lord Jesus Christ as the creator. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. That's from Colossians 1, 15 to 16 in the English Standard Version. So we really want to get our audience to move from where we are today to understanding that everything had to have a beginning, or at least beginning to accept that notion. The first of my steps, and they're not all steps necessarily, they're statements that work together, has um, its origins in the Latin, and it reads like this, in Latin, ex nihilo nihil fit, or from nothing, nothing comes. And this is the it's, it's the beginning of our set of steps, but it's also the last one. We want to go all the way back and say nothing can come from nothing. Well, let's take the first or the next step here. Let's start to logically examine the world in which we live and see how we go. There was a time when any particular thing was not. You right with that? In that case, something other than that particular thing caused it to be. So I have a glass of water here. There was a time when this glass of water was not. Which is to say, something other than this glass of water, or this glass, just use the word, the glass here, caused it to be. Let me take a sip. That's my, my next step, or the second one, after saying nothing comes from nothing. We need to look at all the items around us and say, there was a time when all of these things did not exist, okay? So let's go on to our next image here. We'll pop this up, and it reads like this. All effects, things, or actions have causes. All of them have causes. The causes come before or they precede their effects. So there is a bit of rain happening today. I'm recording this a little bit later in the day. That's why the light is a little bit different. And um, something happened to cause the rain. There was condensation up above. There were certain temperature effects, wind effects, weather effects, and so on. 
that cause that there were causes that also were effects themselves that then caused the rain. Of course, the water itself had to come into being. We've got um, hydrogen and oxygen molecules that have to come into being somehow. They have origins. All those things had causes. If I clap my hands, the uh, the sound of the clapping came because of a cause that occurred before. So that's what we're talking about. That's the way our world works. We never see a cause after an effect, unless time would be running backwards, which um, in which case things would be very strange indeed. Okay, so all causes come before their effects. This leads us very nicely on to our next point, which is that nothing can be self-caused. Do you see how nicely this one comes on the tail of the previous one? Causes come before their effects, and nothing can cause itself to be. Otherwise, it would be before it was. <laughs> Let me read it all here. Nothing can be self-caused, or it would bring itself into being. Even an omnipotent being cannot cause itself or himself or whatever to be. Even God cannot be before he is. Now, God is above time, so but, but you can sort of see where we're going here. Nothing can be self-caused. My glass could not say, hey, I'm going to cause myself. It would need to exist before it existed, and it would need to have intentionality. It would need to intend to do that. Now, you have intentionality to some respect. In some way, you can intend to do things, but you certainly could not intend to cause yourself to be. That intentionality did not exist before you existed. Remember, we're driving things back from a world of stuff to a world where there is nothing. We're, we're kind of degrading our world, and we're, we're looking at its origins. We want to push this a little farther with yet another statement, which is all of these are fascinating and they all require a couple of days thinking each. An existing thing cannot have a non-existing thing as its cause. Ah, nothing can have nothing as a cause. We can now start breaking things apart and breaking them down, and, and we can start looking much more deeply at the origin of things. So this glass could not have something that did not exist as its cause. Maybe the factory and whatever that created the glass no longer exists. That's one thing. But as when it came into being, the thing that caused it to be was there. It's pretty good, isn't it? Okay, nothing can have nothing as a cause. Everything has a cause. Nothing can self-cause. Even the, even the very building blocks right down to the beginning of this glass could not cause themselves to be. We're now beginning to drive back. Some of these things have been here as long as the created order, the natural order has been. Some of the elements here, probably most of the elements, or all, I guess, is nothing caused by nuclear fusion, have existed for as long as the created order has existed. None of them could cause themselves to be. We're driving ourselves back to a very primal time, a very, very basic understanding of things. Here is a, an other statement that even further forces us to think about origins. It pushes us even farther. And this depends on, these, on the others. All things are dependent on something else. All things are dependent on something else. This particular phrase, this thought, along with from nothing, nothing comes, has probably consumed much of my late night pondering about the existence of things. Just, just, just really consumed that. And the reason is that, of course, as someone who trusts the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm, I'm constantly reminded of my finitude, my limitations, um, my frailty. And, and so that particular statement helps me to understand that. All things depend on something else. Now, this glass, constantly using this as an example, but I've got other things I could use, began to exist at the behest of something else. It didn't self-exist. It uh, could not cause itself to be. It could not exist before it existed. It depended on other things to begin to exist. But more, but more, it is influenced by things outside of it. It's dependent on things to continue to exist. It depends on, this glass is very dependent. It might not look so, but if you heat it up hot enough, it'll melt. It's dependent on the fact that I don't 
crack it with a hammer or bang into it with something hard or that I don't toss it out on the pavement and, and, and break it. It even depends on time itself. If it sits here long enough under its own weight, it will simply degrade and collapse. All things depend on other things. Now think about yourself. You depend on so much. You depend on internal functions in your body to work by the second. A couple of heartbeats and you are in a lot of trouble. You miss a couple of heartbeats and you're in trouble. Your heartbeat's wrong. Bam, you're in trouble as well. You depend on, a cert on existence in a certain tiny, tiny range of temperature. There, we know of vast, huge temperature variations away from the Earth on, the, uh, on the, the stars and in space and so on. Vast. You depend on just the tiniest, tiniest bit of radiation. That radiation of, uh, we're talking about gamma radiation, etc. gets any larger, bam, you're cooked straight away. You depend on a certain, only a small number of things you, that you can eat can't eat stones, and uh, you can't drink ocean water, at least not much of it. It'll kill you eventually. There's very, very few things. Even in nature, there are a large amount of things that you simply cannot eat. I'm looking out at grass here and trees. If we were starving, you, most of those things would be, you'd have to somehow prepare them in such a way that you could eat them. Most of them are toxic. Almost all of nature is toxic. There's a small number of things you can eat. There's just a small number of things you can drink. You can't drink fuel oil, or you can't drink, um, well, I mean, mentioned ocean water, just, just just tiny, tiny little things. You're so totally dependent. Of course, your existence depended on the egg of a woman and the seed of a man, and you were, uh, you were matured in the body of a woman. You depended and depended and depended and dependent. All things. Now you, I, and of course, and you depend on things for your ongoing existence as well. So now we're looking at this universe of stuff. Remember I opened up with a picture of nuts and bolts? Every one of those things is dependent on something else. It goes back greater and greater dependency. So you think, look how dependent everything is. Everything is subject to finitude, one of my most favorite words. I love the word finitude. The word finitude speaks of our finiteness and our dependency. So let's take all of these thoughts together, and I'm going to put them on the screen and just sequentially run through them and th one more time, and then, um, then come to my final point here, because we have to go somewhere with our discussion today. So back up on the screen. From nothing, nothing comes. Ex nihilo nihil fit. This is the, this is, we're asking the question that Leib Leibniz asked, why is there something rather than nothing? And we've, we're starting out by saying, from nothing, nothing comes. Nothing comes from nothing. Makes sense. We went on here and we said um, there was a time when any particular thing was not. Think about my glass. In that case, something other than that particular thing caused it to be. The glass did not cause itself to be. Something other than the glass caused it to be. All effects, things, or actions have causes. All causes precede their effects. All causes come before their effects. The cause of the glass came before the glass, okay? The cause of the rain came before the rain. All, all, all effects, all causes come before their effects. Nothing can be self-caused. My glass could not say, hey, I want to cause myself. That would mean it would have to exist before it existed. My glass does not uh, uh, possess intentionality, I do. Even I could not say that. I could not exist before I existed. And even if I could, couldn't create myself, but hey, I just contradicted myself. Okay? Nothing can be self-caused or it would bring itself into being. Even an omnipotent being cannot cause itself to be. Okay? My next one, an existing thing cannot have a non-existing thing as its cause. Nothing can have nothing as its cause. So when my glass came into being, something had to be there to create it. Something had to be there to cause that to happen. And then finally, this very important, or finally second from final statement, all things are dependent on something else, everything, either for their existence, either, either for their initial existence or their ongoing existence. We use the human being as an example, a living thing, totally totally dependent. We have pot plants growing here and so on, and we're constantly trying to adjust to be sure that they survive. They're dependent on just the tiniest little variation in the soil or in the moisture, gone, all right? They're just that delicate, well, as you are as well. Now, this drives us back 
We're now looking at all of the material things that we see and even the immaterial things we're aware of, radio waves and so on, sound waves, immaterial, but they still exist, um, uh, radiation and so on. And we're applying this same set of rules to all of them. We're going back farther and farther and farther. And we're saying, okay, if I go back far enough, well, I'm in a jam. If I go back far enough, ultimately I get to something that, well, it was completely primal. It couldn't start on its own. It had to be started, but there was nothing there to start it. I'm, well, here's my last point. Let me pop it up on the screen. If you go back far enough, you would end with nothing, no thing, no up, no down, no black, no white, no one, no two, no hot, no cold, no vacuum, no pressure, nothing. Because all those things had to have something to start them. Hmm. That's a problem. I've now taken the entire created order and I've pushed it back to the place where it actually could not exist. Because everything has to have something to cause it. And that would mean there would be an eternal existence of things causing things. And that doesn't work. Uh, that, def that defies the principle of sufficient reason, by the way, if you want to know why it doesn't work. But still, it, it's, it's like there's a time when there's nothing. And we're not even talking about a thing. Nothing. Nothing. There's only one answer to this question, at least from a theist, or it's not a word I like very much, but it's a, it's a, a believing in God, religious theist point of view. Don't like any of those real words, but <laughs> so, but here we go. There's only really one answer. Something has to exist that does not depend on anything. Something has to be that cannot fail to be. Something has to somehow be absolutely powerful because it has to cause all these other things to be. It would need to be immensely wise because it would have to put them together so that the things that we see around us actually work. Remember my glass or my nuts and bolts. I'm, I'm a little, you know, challenged by this topic. Can I have another drink of water? It would have to be such that even if all natural things, all things in the created order did not exist, it would still have to exist because it preceded, it was the cause of all those things. I think you know where I'm going. So once I get my argument to this place, and by the way, I get here and I review these from time to time, even in my own mind, for this purpose. The scripture tells us who is to be worshipped. And that is only God is to be worshipped. Why? God depends on nothing. God is God. God is eternally existent, eternally pre-existent, not bound by finitude, completely apart from the created order. Worship only belongs there. It's now time to have a look at our opening passage again because things are slowly beginning to take focus. We may, you may have to hear this video a couple of times or ponder. I would suggest pondering the points more than hearing the video is probably a little more valuable. This speaks of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn. Now, the firstborn is the one above, not born in the natural birth sense. We should do some work on that sometime. For by him all things were created, okay? All things, that is in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Okay, invisible beings, visible beings, everything, all created, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. All things were created through the Lord Jesus Christ for him. He created it all. Okay, well, who is he? God is the necessary being. He cannot fail to exist. He has no beginning, no end, above time, eternal. Ah, there we go. So what we've done is we've used this discussion, and how is my time today? It is kind of where I want it to be. We've used this discussion to take ourselves from our world of stuff, 
of um, items that depend on things. And we've gone back in a possibly a clumsy way because the only way you can do this is clumsy because you, you keep going back saying, wow, you keep going back, wow, there's even, oh, wow. And we've gone back to the place where really there is no reason for anything to exist. If there was no necessary being, there would be nothing. Leibniz asked the question, why is there something rather than nothing? Without an all-knowing, creative being who can, who only must exist, there would be nothing. Because all things have a source for their existence apart from the necessary being, who is God himself. Okay, take some time, ponder these things. I should probably drop these seven points below in my comments so you can um, zip them off and read them a few times and see if they make sense to you. Hey, if you like these videos, like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see if we can grow the channel. We've talked about the, the things that, we've gone from the visible things to the things um, all the way back to nothing, which is more profound than this image. The discussion today was something rather than nothing. We will be back again next week.